Luke 15. From a long distance away, his father saw him coming, dressed as a beggar. And great compassion swelled up in the father's heart for his son, who was returning home. Let me tell you, when you fill out this form, you get victory in one of those boxes, this is what it looks like. You're finally coming back. You, you lost the orphan identity, and you're finally coming back. Because before, when you were an orphan, you thought, if I run home, he's ready to whack me. He can't wait to punch me in the face. But now that I know I'm not an orphan and that I'm a son, he's waiting for me with his arms open. He's been watching for me to come back. Dressed as a beggar as I was, great compassion swelled the heart of the father for his son was returning home. So the father raced out to meet him, swept him up in his arms, hugged him dearly, and kissed him over and over again with tender love. What would that look like in your life to be embraced by the father when you've been walking with shame over things that you fall short on, over ways people have shamed you and constantly reminding you of that false identity, you're never going to make it, you're a loser, you're stupid, whatever. They, they've labeled you with, break it off, Sam. It's breaking off. It's not, not yours. It never was yours. Because God has an identity for you. And feel him wrapping his loving arms around you. That's how it works. He swept him up in his arms and hugged him dearly and kissed him over and over. Then the son said, Father, I was wrong. I've sinned against you. I could never be deserved to call your son. And even in this passion version, the father interrupts him. The son's about to say, I shouldn't even be considered as a servant in your house. And the father interrupts him and says, son, you're home now. <laughs> Do I feel like I'm home with God? Because if you're a child of God, that's how it'll feel, like I'm home. I'm safe. I don't have to earn living here in this house because I'm a child. That cannot be separated. My sonship cannot be broken. If I think I'm just adopted and that can be canceled, then I'm always living with that fear and that worry. Quick, bring me the best robe, my very own robe, the father said to his servants, and I will place it on his shoulders. Do you ever wonder about like, why they put the bars on your shoulders in the military? Because <laughs> it's a sign of authority. So he didn't say, bring me any old robe. He said, bring me the best robe. I want to clothe him. I want people to know when they look at him that he's my son. And that's how it should be for us. And so much of it is on our side to grasp and understand our role as sons and daughters of a living God, not the orphan outcast earning my way. Well, if I just do this right, if I just do that right, then maybe he'll love me. Just throw me some crumbs under the table. No, no, you have a seat at the table. Look at somebody next to you and say, you have a seat at the table. Even if your name is Mephibosheth. <laughs> Woohoo! Then what does he say? Bring the ring, the seal of sonship. Woo! The seal. Remember, we read that in Esther. The seal. It's one thing if you get free by a servant, but who the son sets free, you are free indeed. There's no question of authority because the son has the father's ring. That's why who the son sets free, no debate about it, no prosecuting attorney can overturn that ruling. Jesus put his ring on you. That's the seal of the king. Bring the ring, the seal of sonship, and I, the father, We'll put it on his finger and bring out the best shoes you can find for my son. Come on, ladies, you like that part. I know you do. <laughs> the best shoes. Oh, Jimmy Choo. Who? <laughs> Get free from that spirit. <laughs> See, any time that we're putting our hope in a thing, Instead of the Father, we are taking so much less than what he wants us to have. Man, isn't it cool to know that you are his favorite? Yeah. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, you are his favorite. How could that be true? It's true for every single person in this place. 
because God is impossible to understand. Every one of us is his favorite. It's not a competition. It's so cool. We all get the robe and the ring and the shoes. We all get a seat at the table. We all are written into the will of the Father. Lose the orphan mindset. Amen. Again, you can't, I can't do this for you. We can try to help you, but you've got to be willing to do some of the tough work. And, and look, there's going to be a mechanism that tries to kick in and say, flee. But it's fight or flight. Don't flee. Face this thing. If not now, when? Like, when's going to be a better time? No, you just give the devil more time to cause you to drift away. No, jump into this thing. Let's stand for this last part. I love this. This is the hottest I've ever been on this altar, I can tell you that. <laughs> it's the anointing. I thought it was the air conditioning. <laughs> Woo! This is like the Shroud of Turin now. <laughs> Now he's comparing himself to Jesus. No, I'm not. This is hot. Wow. So I'm back. I'm not in the pigsty. I lost my garments of orphan. Dressed not like a beggar anymore. I got my father's robe on. He put his ring on my finger. I've got his shoes. And now what does he do? It says, let's prepare a great feast and celebrate. Let's prepare a great feast and celebrate. So, I don't know, maybe I could just encourage you to relax a little bit here, right? And if there's a striving in you that you think you need to please God, he's throwing a feast for you as a son and daughter. And some of you are worried that there's a dish missing, there's a fork missing, something over here. No, no, you are the guest of honor. You don't have to do anything. It's on your behalf. He's throwing the feast for you. Martha, get a little more like Mary and just sit at his feet. Amen. Now, there's nothing wrong with serving and doing all those things are great, but only right perspective. Because some of us are so busy, we can't even receive the love that the Father wants to give us, right? And just recognize he's doing this for me. Let's prepare a great feast and celebrate for this beloved son of mine was acting like an orphan but he's my son. This son of mine was once dead, but now he's alive again. Come on, let's lift our hand. I'm alive again. I'm alive again in the Father. I am not an orphan. I accept my role as son and daughter of the living God. I am not what I do. I am who I am in Christ, son and daughter of a living God. So Lord, I just ask you to give us that new birth certificate today that I saw in the Spirit as we dig down and we look on some of the layers that have built up in our lives. And this isn't like terminal illness kind of stuff, but it's holding us back on the things that will help us move forward. So as you show us, Lord, just make it real clear who our identity is, that we're your children today. We're loved. We're, we're the beloved in you. We're your children that could come in the room even when you're busy and sit on your lap and you don't throw us off and throw us down to the floor. We cancel that counterfeit identity now in Jesus' name. Just speak that over yourself. I cancel the counterfeit identity the devil tried to put on me that tried to come down through my family line. I cancel it. I renounce it. I repent of it. And I decree life over my identity that I am not an orphan, but I am a son and daughter of a living God. His spirit's alive in me. And I will fulfill the destiny that my heavenly Father has for me. In Jesus' name. Everybody said. Yes. Amen.